Hello, and welcome to this training video on the DCS World Mission Editor. While I've put together Mission Editor tutorials in the past, this will be the first time that I'm going to be tailoring them to go hand in hand with the aircraft training videos that I'll be producing for each module available in DCS World. These videos are going to be building on one another, which means that each one on its own should be relatively short. However, at the end, you should have developed a simple mission that you can use to further hone your skills in your aircraft of choice, even after you've completed its training series. Now, if you're the type of pilot who's not super excited about building your own missions or learning how to use the mission editor in order to create your own custom missions, don't worry, I'm going to be providing the mission files alongside these training videos so that you can just download them and jump into the environment if you prefer that. The links to those files will be in the description below each of these videos. Now, before we get started, I'd love it if you would subscribe to the channel, toggle that notification bell so that you know exactly when new videos are released, and if you find the information in them useful, go ahead and employ that like button. Without further ado, let's get started. The DCS World Mission Editor is very simple to use, at least for our purposes here. You can get super advanced with it, but we're going to get started in a very simple fashion. Go ahead and find the Mission Editor link over here on the right-hand side of the screen, and click on it. It's going to prompt you to create a new mission, or if you have a mission that you want to open, you can always open an existing mission. And while we will use it in the future, we're going to ignore it for right now. We're going to go ahead and create a new mission. This will prompt you to choose which map you would like to use. And in this case, I'm going to use Caucasus. But if you want to use any of the other maps, Nevada or Persian Gulf for the channel or any of the other ones, go ahead and select your map of choice. All of the principles in these mission editor tutorials will be applicable in any of the maps. Now, you can also choose which coalition various countries are on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move Russia over to the blue side because I like to use some of the planes that they get that some of the other countries don't have access to. And once you have your coalition set up, go ahead and click on OK. And what you should be presented with is a map of the region that you chose. In this case, this is the Caucasus region. You can zoom in and out on the map by using your mouse wheel, either to get a little wider view of things around you or to zoom in a little closer. Now, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on Kabuleti. Go ahead and find an airfield on the map that you're looking at and zoom in on it using your mouse wheel just until you start seeing parking spot numbers. In this case, we can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all of these going up to 30 on the south side and then 31 through 42 on the north side. I do want you to click on whatever airport you're starting at and change the coalition up here to blue. This essentially just allows this airport to refuel and rearm you uh, if it's on the same coalition as you. So if you are on the blue coalition like I am and you're going to be using US planes or Russia, which we move to the blue coalition, or in our case, Georgia, um, this will allow this airport to interact with you and support you. Neutral, they will interact with you, but you won't be able to refuel or rearm. So just make sure you set it to blue. The other thing that I want to do before we get started with actually building our mission is coming over to the left to this little uh, icon that looks like a little cloud and it says time, date, and weather. And I want to click on that. And I just want to make sure that the start time is something that makes sense for me. I'm going to go ahead and actually set this to 6 a.m. So now that I've chosen 6 a.m., I'm actually going to change the base and the thickness of my clouds and the density. I'm going to change this to 5. I'm going to change the thickness to 1200 and I'm just selecting this and typing in 1200 and then my bases I'm going to set at 5500 feet. This will give us a little bit of variety in the air um, without too much wind. We have all of our wind set at zero so that's all fine. This is basically a weather panel so that you can control the weather in this game. So this is all we want to do for our initial setup. If you want you can click on the X right here and it should make that panel go away. The next thing that we want to do is place our starting aircraft. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and click on my aircraft groups button, which is this one right here. If you hover over it for a second, it will say add or modify airplane group. We'll click and then we'll get a couple of default options up here. I'm going to name my group. I'm just going to call it training. Flight. And then the country that I choose determines which language I get to hear in the cockpit audio. So I have USA selected, which means English. Um, the type of plane that I want to fly is the SU-25T. 
The problem is USA in the real world doesn't use SU-25Ts. So if I click on this list for type, I actually won't find that aircraft in this list. USA doesn't use it, it's not in the list. So you might be tempted to go ahead and switch to Russia because you know that Russia uses the SU-25T and we have them set on the Blue Coalition, so they will be blue uh, working with this airfield. They will be able to get supported and everything. And if we come into the drop-down list, yeah, absolutely, there is an SU-25T here that we can select. The issue with this is, since we've chosen Russia, all of our cockpit audio, communication with the tower, communication with any other airplanes in our flight, the audio is going to be in Russian. The subtitles that we see up at the top are going to be in English, because that's translated. However, the voiceover audio is going to be Russian. Um, I personally don't understand Russian, so I want to make that English. Now, you might have remembered that I mentioned Georgia a little bit earlier in this video. Georgia is also a country that uses the SU-25T, and I just so happen to know that their cockpit audio is set to English. So I can just select Georgia, I can reselect the SU-25T here, and now I will have an SU-25T with English cockpit audio. One other thing I wanted to mention in this dropdown, you might notice that some of these aircraft are yellow and some of these aircraft are gray or white, if you want to call it white. The yellow aircraft are modules that you own and you can actually fly. The gray ones are ones that uh, you can put in the mission and have artificial intelligence or friends who might own the modules fly, but you won't actually be able to jump into them unless you purchase and own the module. The SU-25T and the TF-51 should be yellow on everybody's systems because they are planes that are free and they come with DCS World. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick with my SU-25T in this case. I'm going to change the skill to client, which means that somebody who owns this aircraft will be able to fly it as opposed to an AI pilot. And it means that it will not spawn if there is no client available to pilot it. I'm going to change the pilot name to training flight pilot. And I'm going to change the tail number to 777. I am going to toggle radio so that the plane does have a radio on it. And none of these options apply to us, so we're just going to leave those alone. And we're going to go ahead now and click somewhere on this airport to place the aircraft. Now, I'm kind of partial to parking spot number one over here. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit with my mouse. If you want to pan the map around, you can right click and move it and slide it around up and down and then let go to stop moving it. I'm going to click right here on parking spot one. And you'll notice that this waypoint area down here will highlight once we have the plane placed. So now I have a bunch of waypoint information. This is our initial waypoint. They call it IP0 or waypoint zero. This is your initial point. In this case, we can change a couple of things about it. The one thing that we want to change is the type of waypoint it is. It's set to turning point. Now you can have a turning point, a flyover point. You can take off from the runway, take off from the ramp, which is the one that we're going to select, or you can take off from parking with the aircraft already ready to go, or you can make it a landing waypoint, basically like the, the final waypoint that a plane would be landing at. Um, we are going to make it take off from ramp. The difference between turning point and flyover point we will go over in a future tutorial, uh, but our first tutorial for the SU-25T is going to be starting it up. So we're gonna go ahead and click take off from ramp. That'll start the plane cold and dark, nothing on, and we will get to start up the SU-25T, which is not a difficult thing to do. Um, we can confirm, it should have already stuck it to parking spot number one, but you can confirm right here where it says PRK, zero one, that means we're in parking spot one. If we wanted to, for example, move it to parking spot nine, we could just come over here and change this to nine. It'll jump the plane over and it'll be parked in the right spot. I'm gonna keep it at one, but I did wanna demo that. Our starting time for the plane is 6 a.m., which was the time that we set for the map in this case, and that's what we want to set. If we didn't want this plane to be able to start until a future time in the mission, we could maybe set this to 6.15, and then this player would not be able to spawn into the mission until 15 minutes have passed. So we're going to go ahead and keep that at 6 o'clock. And then the waypoint options down here we're not going to worry about right now. We're gonna get into those in a future video. One thing that I do wanna mention here, by default, add is checked here, and if you keep it checked, 
if you left click anywhere on the map, it will just start adding waypoints. Now this is not necessarily what you wanna do and you can't click out or drag or anything like that. You're kind of stuck in this mode until you change it to edit and then you can select other things on the map, select the airfield, select other units. Um, but I did want to mention that in case you got kind of stuck in that cycle because it happens to me all the time and I'm used to using the map editor. So just keep that in mind. Now I'm going to go ahead and select waypoint 15, which was the last one. And I'm just going to click on Dell to delete all of these waypoints because I don't want any of them. I just want my initial point. And there we go. We got one SU-25T ready to go on the ramp, cold and dark, parking spot one. I know that they're going to clear me to taxi to runway seven. That just seems to be where Cabo Letty sends me, which is why I put myself in parking spot one. If you've put yourself somewhere else on the map in Cabo Letty and you want to be closer to runway seven, you can go ahead and again use that little uh, runway drop down or parking drop down to go back up to parking spot one or have at it. Give it a try to taxi from one of the other parking spots. Might be a little bit fun to get lost and, and see what you can do. Now, what next thing we have to do here is we have to save the map. And to do that, we're going to come up here to File. We're going to go down to Save As. And then it's going to basically put you in your users, your username, Save Games DCS or DCS Open Beta uh, Missions folder. This is where you would find all of your missions if you were browsing on your file system. And then just give it a name. I've already got it named SU-25T Training 01, and I already have a previous version of that mission here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and save over this mission by clicking OK. It's going to prompt me and say, hey, the file already exists. You sure you want to overwrite it? I'm going to say yes. And my mission is saved and ready to go. The last thing I want to mention is to get out of the mission editor, you can come down here to this little exit button the little red exit in the lower left, or if you wanted to go ahead and test your mission out, you could always click this little green fly mission button and it will automatically load the mission for you and let you fly around in it. That's it for this mission editor tutorial. Like I said, the next one, we will be building on this and uh, we will slowly build out a small mission that you can use to do every aspect of training that we're gonna be going over in the SU-25T training series as well. So I will see you over in that series. And again, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, go ahead and toggle that notification bell. And anytime I upload a new training video for the mission editor or for the SU-25T or for the A-10C, which is coming up very soon, you will be notified. And if you found this video useful, go ahead and employ that like button. I would love to know how many people are enjoying these videos. And now that we've completed our initial mission, I will see you out on the ramp where we will learn how to start up the SU-25T.